everyone welcome back to another video today I am bringing you more tips and tricks on how to improve your coloring skills we are back with romantic country a fantasy coloring book by Erie I have a few different ideas for today's video and a couple different things I want to show you and I think I'll be able to demonstrate them and provide you with lots of examples using this book if you enjoy videos like this and you want to see more, please do make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn your bell notifications on so that you always get notified every time I post a new video. And make sure you check the description down below because down there you will find a link for my Facebook group as well as my email list and also for my Patreon if you would like to support me over there. So let's go ahead and get into this video. The first thing I want to talk about in this video is what do you do when your Prismacolors or any one of your other colored pencils get down to this little, like I literally have a little nib left. <laughs> Isn't it cute though? <laughs> you guys know how much I value my white Prismacolors and I have so many of them, but this is almost the end of one of them. And I wanted to show you a really cool way for all of you that are just beginning to color or just learning all of these tips and tricks and don't know about this, but I have pencil extenders. This is what the pencil extenders look like. These are the ones that I bought. These are by Art and & Fly. And I think I've got already taken a couple out of the box, but it comes with a few different colors. I've used quite a few of them, but they are really handy. And these, this particular brand that I purchased, they work really, really well and they stay tight around the pencil. They will put these marks on your pencil, but that's okay because I don't think that's really gonna matter once you're down this little on your Prismacolor or whatever colored pencil that you're using. The one issue that I have found with when my pencils get down this little, I can't use my favorite pencil sharpener anymore. <laughs> you guys know my favorite pencil sharpener is this Doll 133, but if it's not this small, and let me see if I have one that is just a little bit longer than this one. Here we go. Okay, so here's one of my other favorite colors, but this is my very light blue that I use all of the time. So when you're using your Doll 133, you're generally supposed to pull this out and, or push the button in and pull this out. But when your pencils get this small, it makes it kind of difficult to be able to do that. Normally, you would push this in and then you would push your pencil in, but if you can see this, the pencil is all the way through and it's not even sticking out. And I might be able to turn it a couple times. Actually, it is working. So I was able to stick it in there and be able to do that and still sharpen this pencil. But when it gets down too low and you can't, you're, you can no longer do that, you can still stick your pencil in, not pull this out. Let me see if maybe I have one that is possibly a little bit shorter. I don't think that I do. And you guys know I don't wanna go sharpening away my pencils. <laughs> This one's even longer than that one was, but you can see that you can use this pencil sharpener until they get pretty short, but this is another one of my favorite colors, and so it has, doesn't have much of a life left to it <laughs> either. So if you wanted to use the Doll 133 and you wanted to just push this in like, or yeah, push the pencil in like this, you just push the button and put the pencil in, but you don't necessarily have to push this in and pull this out. You can put the pencil in as far as it will go and you can still turn it. You're going to have to 
push it in a little bit more and just keep doing it that way. But if your pencil is really short and will not even fit into the top, you can still use this pencil sharpener and be able to stick it all the way inside the sharpener and not have to pull this out. You would just have to do it just like I just showed you. And I probably should have showed you in this my in my last video. If you didn't see the last tips and tricks video, I really went into this doll 133 and showed you exactly how to use it. But I kind of wanted to just talk about in this video what to do when your pencils get down to that small. But that is when this pencil sharpener comes in and this is my little comb. I showed you this one in the last video too, but my little tiny white that doesn't really have a tip on it. I can use this pencil sharpener when it gets down that small. Oops. <laughs> And then I can see how much more I can actually get out of this. And let's see what happens here. And then we're going to try to put it in the pencil extender. So here is my tiny little white Prisma color. And I'm just going to kind of place it like you don't want to do this because it's going to fall all the way inside your pencil extender, but it will fall back out. But you just want to put it right where you want it. And then you want to come, I think I need to turn my hands around here, to the edge. And you want to turn the silver part here. And it will start to tighten up around your pencil. And so now my white Prisma color is going to be usable again. But this box here, it comes with five of them. So you get quite a few and they are fairly cheap. If you're interested in getting some of these pencil extenders, I will make sure that they're linked down in the description box below. But now you can see that you can hold your pencil really nicely just as if it was a full-size pencil and now you are able to actually color color with it of course you can't see it because I'm coloring white on white but you can see that it works and then when you are ready to take it out the only downfall of this is that every time you want to sharpen it you do have to take it out of the pencil extender let me go ahead and show you how well it works on another one since that one was okay so you can turn it here from the top to instead of just turning the silver part but you can generally make it as long as you'd like to I mean you could do put the pencil in all the way at the end if you wanted to and it's going to hold it in there nice and tight but now you could see that this is a little bit of a darker color so you could see that it works nicely and it actually gives me a really nice grip on my pencil and I'm still able to hold the pencil sideways and alleviate that pressure from pushing down too hard as I color. Another hack that you can do is if you look at your Prisma colors, they're pretty much flat and they've got the, um, they've got the uh, pigment or the lead going all the way through the pencil. You could see that on both tips. You could always get some super glue and you could, I'm not going to do it because I really don't want to do that with my pencils, but this is an idea for those of you that want to do it. But you can get some super glue and you could actually put these together and they will actually just sharpen right through and you can end up using this pencil all the way to the end so that you don't waste any part of it and it will just go right into the other pencil. Now when the Prismacolors used to be made, actually I can show you because somebody, one of my subscribers was so kind 
as to send me these when I received these in the mail I was so so happy but these are very old Prisma colors from years and years ago and you can see that they do not come sharpened so this is something I would guess that people have been doing with their Prisma colors for some time because when they came like this you could just when you got to the end put the two ends together super glue them and then of course the same with the same color and then just keep on sharpening all the way through so that you don't lose any part of your pencil but I was so excited to be able to get these these are from way back when Beryl and Eagle used to create the Prisma colors and so these are basically like very antique old old Prisma colors and I am just so excited to have those but I am going to create a shadow box whenever I can get to Michaels and purchase one or maybe I guess I should be able to order that off of Amazon but I'm going to create a shadow box that says Pamela's passion for pencils in the background and I am going to take those and like put some really pretty ribbon or something around them and kind of lay those around in the shadow box just as kind of like a little thing to put up on my office wall that is the first little I guess hack I wanted to be able to show you and so now we're going to move on to the next thing. And the next thing is another really, really cool hack that I want to show you. I'm calling these more so of a hack just because they are ways that you could kind of get around, you know, something else. Like with the pencil extenders, you're not going to have to go out and you're not going to have to buy new pencils. You're kind of getting around that by finding a way to make your pencils last a little bit longer. And this one is kind of another quote unquote hack because I think that this is something that a lot of people really don't know that you can do. But I wanna talk about creating black. So a lot of us are just going to take our black pencil and I'm not going to demonstrate this part on a coloring page, at least not yet, because I want to show you the differences on, this is the, um, I think this is the Spring Hill paper. This is either the Spring Hill paper or the Nina paper. It might be the Nina paper. I'm not sure. But you can come in when you want black, and you could just come in and you can straight color with your black. And this is what it looks like if I straight color with my black and I could come back and I could add some layers over this and just kind of come back and forth and that is what it looks like with just straight up black. Now that is a very what I call flat black and there is no dimension, there's no depth, there's no shadows. There's no anything to it. So like if you were going to come in and you were going to color something like, like say you had a cat on a coloring page and you wanted it to be a black cat, you wouldn't just come in and flat out just color that cat with just your black Prisma color because that's not going to work because it's just going to look very flat. It's not going to pop off the page. It's not going to have any depth. It's not going to have any dimension to it. You are not going to be able to see the fur like nothing is going to stand out we want our cats to look like they have fur right because <laughs> we don't just want them to look flat like it's just you know just a flat image laying on your coloring page and maybe i'll be able to show you an example of that in this video but again i don't want the video to go on too long because I want you to be able to watch the whole thing all the way through. You guys will have to let me know in the comments what you think about like my videos going on like really, really long because some of my videos are like an hour long and I'm really curious if y'all sit there and watch the whole thing through until you get through all of the tips and tricks or if you would like me to kind of divide those videos up into a couple videos and just bring you like one tip or trick per video instead of like three and then a whole bunch of little ones in between like how the last one turned out. The last one, it's like I was showing you one technique and how to do something and a really great tip and trick, but so many other things came out of that one tip and trick. So that was a really great video. If you've not seen part three, make sure you go back and watch that. 
again, that link will be in the upper right hand corner. Now, to create black, I'm going to show you again, like I want to call it a little hack because this is definitely a hack. This is a way around something. So instead of using your black Prismacolor, you can take your indigo blue. You guys know this indigo blue is one of my absolute favorite colors. You can do so much with this indigo blue. Like I even use this when I'm coloring hair, when I want to create black hair, I use the indigo blue as a transition color so that my hair does not look flat. This is dark umber, which is a very dark, dark brown. Now watch what happens when I, also in my last video, I talked a little bit about, and I even showed you and demonstrated a little bit about blending your colors. I explained to you that you may have 150 colors in your Prismacolor set, but it is not just 150 colors. If you start blending your colors together and you mixing the and and start mixing them together, you can create so many colors. Like even if you only have the 36 set, I got along with my 36 set of Prisma colors for the longest time because I was blending my colors together to make other colors even way back when I started coloring. I got along with my 36 set for the first three years until I bought my 150 set. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you this hack. So I'm going to lay down my Dark Umber and I'm going to come back and I'm going to lay down my indigo blue. Now look what is happening. Is that so, so cool? Now this is not the only way that you can create black. There are other colors that you could put together and create black as well. Let me go ahead and come back this way. But this right here is going to create an even deeper black than if you had used just the black uh, Prismacolor. If you look at this one and you look at this one, I mean, I can come back with my black and I can try to add a few more layers just like I did with this one here. But look at that. I mean, if you had this on a coloring page, you would look at it and your eyes would see black. And that is actually brown and blue put together. But isn't that the coolest thing ever? So if I was just using these two colors and I was creating black with them, and I wanted more of a warmer black, I would just use more of the dark brown. If I wanted more of a cooler black, then I would use more of the indigo blue. Let's go ahead and try that and see what happens. So let's go ahead and try our cooler black first. So I'm gonna lay down my indigo blue and then over the top of it, I'm going to come in and lay some of the dark umber. Look how that just instantly turns black. But if I just keep on with more of the blue, and then just a little bit of this, or a little bit of the um, dark umber. So a little bit more of the dark umber, but my main color in this one is going to be this indigo blue. So now I have more of a cooler black. Black does have blue in it. If you look at like a hair dye, and you've ever colored your hair and you go to the store and you purchase the black hair dye if you dye your hair that color black 
your hair is going to actually have a blue tint to it. I've dyed my hair a true true black and I never ever again have gone with a true true black because my hair always had a blue tint to it. And so now I just go with a dark brown because if you go with the dark brown, it's not going to have that blue. But black does have blue in it. But this is what it's going to look like if it is more of a cooler black. And then if we wanted to come in and we wanted to make a warmer black, I'm going to use hard pressure here with my dark umber. And then I'm going to use less of the blue. So I'm just going to do that amount of blue. Okay, so that is fairly dark. Now, if you look at these, they both have the same colors in them. But this one is more of a warmer black, and this one is more of a cooler black. Now, if I wanted to, I can come in and I can add more color and change them up just a little bit. If I was actually using them on a coloring page, they would look much different because I would be adding much more depth and highlights and you know, dimension and shadows and trying to make them work for whatever image it was that I was coloring on the coloring page. So this is my flat black, just the black Prismacolor. And then this one is these two colors, the indigo blue and the dark umber combined together where I just did my first demonstration. And then over here, I am showing you how you would make the um, cooler black, which you would just add more of the indigo blue. And then over here with this one, this is the warmer black where you would use more of the dark umber. So that I think is a really cool trick. Here's the page that we have been working on and I really wasn't sure if there was something on this page that I can demonstrate the black with or creating that black, but there's these little work boots down here and I think that they would be really cool to make black or we could do this gardening tool here and kind of do the handle, but I don't know, I don't think that we're gonna do that one because that would just, I don't know, that would be kind of boring. I think that we are going to go ahead and color these boots and I'm gonna use that little trick that I just showed you and I'm gonna try not to use black. I'm going to stick with just my dark umber and my indigo blue and we are going to see what we could create. Now I have another, a couple other colors sitting off to the side that I may want to use just to add a few little highlights because we're going to add some highlights up here at the top of the boots and kind of over here. And we don't want them to just look flat. I'm going to go ahead and start with my indigo blue and I'm just going to very lightly start shading this in and I'm going to stay out of the areas where I want my shadow to be and we're going to see how well this works on an actual coloring page. Let's go ahead and put a little bit over here. And I think I kind of want my shadow going right down here and a little bit over here. So I'm going to try to stay out of those areas. Like I showed you in the previous video, use the white of the paper. Using the white of the paper is so important. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring the dark umber over the top of it. And let's see what happens. Look at that, it instantly turned black.
How cool is this? I have so many more ideas for you guys, like you have no idea. <laughs> I could do this series with the tips and tricks for absolutely like forever. <laughs> okay, so let's come over here and do this side. Look how when you blend these colors together. Let's see, I told you guys that I was going to bring you some videos on how to blend some of your colors together to create other colors. And so this is just a perfect example of that. And I wanted to also be able to do a video where I showed you how to create white or how to color something white. I know that I did a daisy on a um, on the tone tan paper, but a lot of people were asking me how to do white, but on white paper. And I think that would be a really great video. So I figured that I would do black in one video and then maybe white in another video if you guys would like to see that. But you'll have to let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing that. Because you guys know I like to make videos that y'all are interested in seeing. Now see this makes it look a little bit more blue. The trick is adding in that um, that dark umber because it's such a dark brown and with the two of them together it just really turns this black. And I'm trying to just kind of go slow because I want to make sure that I'm mixing the colors correctly. And I don't want to be able to see blue. I want to be able to see black. But with the combination of the colors, it looks really good. And I've never really done this on other objects before, but I really wanted to be able to show you. I generally use this little hack <laughs> on hair. And then like over here on the boot where this part is kind of meeting the other part. You want that to be darker. So I'm going to come back with the indigo. We'll see, I don't want to add too much indigo because I don't want these to be a cooler or I don't want to be creating a cooler black necessarily. I want it to look more like a warmer black. thinking it would be really cool the little buckles that are here on these I think it would be really cool to grab my gel pens and kind of go over those because I'm working with such darker colors and I'm kind of going out of the lines a little bit which is fine and I think a gel pen will just completely fix that
But when we're done, these are gonna look totally black. And I'm trying to decide what other color we can add to kind of intensify this and really make those highlights pop. And I'm kind of thinking grays. But look what happens when you just bring these colors together. I mean, can you even believe this? <laughs> It is so super cool. Now see, the blue is showing up because I'm laying down more blue, but the blue is gonna go away. And I'm coming back over. I don't wanna to add too much blue, like I said, because I don't want the blue to show through. I just want the blue to help me create that intense black look. But you guys will have to tell me what you think of this really cool hack. I think it's pretty neat. Okay, so we don't want our boots to look like they are just, you know, we want them to pop off the page. So we do want some highlights in there. And because I'm trying to create um, a black color that is more on the warmer side, I am going to grab my 10% warm gray and I'm going to just kind of pull these colors together with my 10% warm gray. Look at that. What do y'all think of that? Is that the coolest thing ever? And now I have black boots, but they do not look flat at all. I think I need to come in and add a little bit more color in there. Okay, so they look black and I did not even use black. So Y'all need to tell me what you think of this in the comments. I think it is the coolest thing ever. So I'm coming in here and I'm adding more of my indigo blue because I want to really intensify those shadows. And now I'm just coming in and I'm adding more depth in the areas where I need it. And then here I can, still can see some blue, so I'm just kind of gonna pull this through a little. And then up here in this area, and I'm going in more so, like I said, with this dark umber because I'm trying to get rid of the blue. I don't wanna see the blue. I just wanna use the blue as my blending color. So I need, if you imagine in your head and like you had these boots on or you were wearing these boots, you would down here where your foot or the top of your foot is kind of going to kind of meet the part of the boot that goes up this way. This is going to generally be darker in here. And so you want to make it look that way when you're coloring. And then these areas here are going to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to come back here with my gray. And I'm going to add a little bit more of that. I still see quite a bit of blue down here in the bottom. So I'm going to go over this. And then it just kind of instantly gets rid of that blue.
And I'm trying to figure out what color I want the soles down here to be. And then I'm just going to kind of pull this through just a little bit more with my dark umber. And I think I have pretty much gotten rid of all of the blue that was showing through. And I'm coming back with my gray just to make sure I've got that highlight in there. So I hope you guys see now how to create black without ever even using black. So I pulled out my Color It Gel pens. These are my absolute favorite gel pens. I've got the glitter set and then I have the regular set that comes with the metallics and some glitter and then some neon colors. But these are the best gel pens in the entire world. I absolutely love them. Everything that I'm showing you guys in these videos, I always have linked in the description box below. But I think that these uh, gel pens are still a really fabulous price right now. And I'm going to show you a really cool trick, which is kind of like, I don't think a lot of people know that you can do this with gel pens, but I'm going to show you in this video also how to gel, how, how to blend your gel pens. So I've got the modern gray and then I have the silver lining and there's quite a bit of difference between these two colors, but when you're using gel pens, your gel pens will tend to lay right over your uh, prism colors. At least they do with the prism colors. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've used them with other uh, colored pencils as well, I think with my Pablo's, and they laid over my Pablo's really nicely too. But I'm going to color the soles of these boots, and I'm also going to color the little buckles on the boots. So the modern gray is the darker one, and then my silver lining is the lighter one. So let me just show you this really cool trick. So I'm going to come in here. I hope that this stands out beyond the black because, I don't know, they're like, this one's kind of dark. Let me, let me try the silver lining first. So I'm going to come in here with the silver lining and I'm just going to color this in. And it does show. But see now, I can come in here with the darker one. And look how I just blended that in and added a little bit more of a shadow in that area. Is that so cool? Okay, so I laid a little bit of that down. And then I'm going to pull that through with the lighter color. But the gel pens are really cool because they actually color the or cover the lines in the coloring book. So I did that. And then over here on this side, I want to add a little bit of shading. Oh, look at that. And then down on the bottom, I want to just line it and give it a little bit of dimension. I bet you guys didn't know you could do this with gel pens. And then I'm just kind of blending it out. Gel pens are the best thing ever. I'm going to come back and add a little bit more here of shadows. And look how that just pops. Is that so cool? And then you just come back with the lighter color again and you just kind of pull that out. But isn't that neat? 
So it's always so fun to mix your gel pens with your colored pencils. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun bringing this video to you and creating it and just sharing with you a few different tips and tricks and hacks so that you can improve your coloring skills. I didn't think I was going to bring out the gel pens today because I kind of wanted to do a separate video on blending gel pens and I may still do that because they are so much fun. But I showed you how to create black without even using black and how to make sure you still had your highlights and everything in there. I showed you a couple little hacks to save your Prisma colors and make them last a little bit longer when you get down to your little nib. And I think that this was a lot of fun. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, please do give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and you also turn your bell notifications on. That way you're always notified every time I post a new video. Everything that you've seen in this video will be linked in the description box below. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy coloring. Bye.